Chris Paul. A couple weeks ago, the beat writer for the Los Angeles Times, I think his name is Broderick Turner, did a story about the dirtiest players in the NBA. Five, he did the top five, two thunders on that list. They were Steven Adams and Serge Ibaka. Not mentioned, not even in the article, was Chris Paul. Maybe because most of the players pulled were on the Los Angeles Clippers. Perhaps. But yesterday, last night, Chris Paul did an old Chris Paul move. Ask Kevin Durant about it. Yeah. Is Chris Paul the dirtiest point guard in the league? What did he do last night? He pulled a Julius Hodge on Kevin Durant. Did and he really? And, as, uh, and that's all I'll say about he that. He created separation below the belt. Oh, is that how Kevin... Yeah, yeah, yeah he was yeah, mad about it. He yeah. almost... Like, he got Kevin got really mad at the ref about it. Um, it was right before halftime, right? Is that right? I think it was second quarter. Now, okay. there was a timeout, and like Durant was getting in the ref's face about it. It was kind of there's something between these two teams and that particular move. That's the Serge Ibaka move on Blake Griffin. Um, how how and why is Chris Paul sort of escaping this tag of being a dirty player? I, I, I'm not sure that he is. I mean, people are talking about it today. There's talk he might actually get find or potentially suspended for a game for that move. Uh, is he a, I don't know. I mean, he's so good and he does all this different stuff that, you know, I, he's not like known specifically for bruising like a Steven Adams, uh, you know, who's always getting in these um, tussles. And the thing is, we're looking at it right now, like there's ways you can like excuse it. Like, oh, I was just kind of trying to get separation. You know, get separation. Yeah, I don't know. You know, he created he's separation. He's really tall. I don't know. You know, I don't know. You can say a lot of things. Does the, does the likability factor play into Chris Paul getting away with some of this stuff? We see him every day on these commercials. We've been quoting the, the, the State Farm commercials Dropping all day. Names. I mean, does, does it kind of tie into the way that some people in the media have said Kevin Durant's gotten a pass for not winning a title or so-and-so so because of his likability? Darnell, you go way back with Chris Paul. Am I allowed to talk about Chris Paul? What say you Talk about, about this? Plenty on well, the I think we could have a whole podcast or a video about we who is did. the most Chris Paul of Chris Paul point guards. Uh, that I was a great. Know, I don't know that he meant to do that. That didn't look intentional to me. Oh, of course it did. <laughs> of course it did. He if does this. He does this in the gym. If you ain't After cheating, I you ain't trying. Okay, that's all I gotta say about Chris on Paul. On to the next thing. Hey well, guys, you. I want, got a go Chris ahead. Paul question for. Does it bother you? I mean, Russell Westbrook's really starting to do this play, too. But Chris Paul did maybe the worst of the worst of it last night where, like, Kevin Durant just made a lap and he was running up the court, and Chris Paul got the inbound. And he just, like, went, ran in front of him, bumped into him, and fell down. And, like, the refs kind of, I guess, got to call a foul. Westbrook really does it now in transition, where he, especially if they're in the bonus and he knows it'll get him two free throws. So just kind of dribble into somebody and fall down. There's What's always some. Would you, like, does that bother you? Well, there's more things that, that bother. You. There's more things that bother you about Chris Paul. He's always around this stuff, which Westbrook's always around. Remember, early in the game, Doc Rivers gets a technical foul because Chris Paul somehow got bumped into and got thrown off. I mean, that he he set that up a bit. Yeah. It really seemed. Like, and then he got a call later when he threw somebody else out of bounds. Well, there was pain and looking at the replay. That was just a turnover. No call. Hit the weight room campaign. Hit the weight room. It <laughs> yeah. does It does bother a little bit. Here's what bothered the ESPN crew. You guys didn't hear it. We did. Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook not getting back. Yeah. I listened to your podcast last week with Barry Trammell in which he uh, evoked the Hubie Brown line, which is, let me understand this. If you're not on the offensive glass and you're not back, where are you? Can you do it in the Barry Trammell version of Hubie I Brown's voice? I don't, think I, I don't think I can. I don't think I can, but I can say this. They were in no man's land many times. Is there an excuse for it? I mean, look, we talked about this on the podcast today. I think their turnovers just, like, sap their energy too much. I don't know if it's a selfish type of thing, but, like, when they start turning the ball over, they stop getting back. They stop making the extra rotation. They're just – they're – Flopping around, they're mad. The Teams penguin. get runs. I, I, I really think the root of this team's issues happens when they have turnover binges, and they've been having a lot of them lately. Durant is the penguin. He claps his hands on the side of his legs. <laughs> Westbrook is the arguing and the stare down. Meanwhile, they're running back. Are any of these legit, Eric? No. They need to stop it. And the, when, How when, old are these guys now? 27. When I mean, Both Durant... Of. 
Sometimes with, LeBron James has been caught doing the same thing. But everyone, it's NBA, and it's like a long season, and this thing's happened. But like as the playoffs move forward, as these big games happen, they can't be doing. This. But LeBron James will also run you down and get a get a get a block on a chase down or something. I mean, Durant will sulk. He went into that second quarter. He went through a funk in that second quarter yesterday when he had like three turnovers and he was sulking all the entire time. So, I mean, maybe if they spend as much energy getting back as they did on sulking, it would change things a little bit. It. It was noticeable. Jeff Van Gundy had a lot to say about it. Mark Jackson had some to say about it. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how that reverberates with the Thunder. A couple other questions. Kyle Singler, a couple questions. One from Eric. You're asking yourself the question here, Eric. Another guy, a guy on, on the or, or somebody or somebody else named Eric or somebody named Jake says seriously, what's up with Kyle Singler's hair? Seriously, what's up with Kyle Singler's game right now? He's balling. He can do his hair whatever way he wants to as long yeah, as he plays. Yeah, it, it is a, you know, I don't know. He's, it's weird because it's a haircut that I think, you know, if he goes out with his friends that, <laughs> you know, it's probably doesn't, you know, it looks like uh, it's all right. But, like, it's one of those haircuts that when he's in a game and, you know, he's wearing basketball stuff in an arena and he's playing, he's getting sweaty. Like, it does look kind of weird. He's, like, flopping around. We had a funny picture on our front page. Remember when he hit that hook shot? The hair was like, looked like it was like a weird. Obviously, thing. there's some irony about me asking about somebody's hair. Uh, let's ask about his game. There, the, the talk radio around here explodes whenever he plays. Why is this guy playing? Why is he playing, Eric? He's playing because he tries. And it didn't equate to. Transition defense. Yeah. yeah. We talked about his transition defense on the podcast. Uh, he's one of the few guys that consistently gets back in transition defense and disrupts shots. I think Kevin Durant also does a pretty good job of it at times, too, when it's like a two-on-one situation and Durant will force a bad shot and, and the Thunder will get a rebound and go the other way. But Kyle Singler, ever since I think maybe the, the first time they went to Dallas this year, he was really good in that game and getting back in transition defense. Uh, Billy Donovan said it time and time again, he adds length on the perimeter in terms of his defense. I think that's another key factor. He, he offers more resistance than Anthony Morrow, clearly. He offers more resistance in a campaign. Uh, he's not the same body type as a Waiters or a Foy, and he's not doing the, the kind of defending they are on, sh on, sh on shooting guards. But on small forwards, you'd rather have a Kyle Singler out there when Durant's not out. There. You remember the first half at Golden State? He gave really good minutes. He was like he uh, content. I think he might have even blocked Clay Thompson at the rim. He chased, uh, you know, you know, one of those like electric fast breaks that gets a Curry three. He like chased down, ran Curry off a three, and it turned into a turnover. Um, he's hitting his threes more lately. I think, you know, I think he's shooting like 60% the last seven games. He's been really solid for seven straight games. And if they can get really solid off the bench, suddenly you're like a very important bench player on this team because they're not getting really solid from anyone. Like, Remind us, Darnell, what kind of player was he before he got to Oklahoma City? He was really good. He was a good three-point shooter. Um, he was an okay defender, not great. Uh, but sort of that three and D guy that, a low, a poor man's version of a three and D mm -hmm. guy in Detroit, um, but he just does a little bit of everything well. Uh, defense is probably not his strongest suit, but um, you know he can rebound a little bit, he can shoot a little bit. He's a good passer, uh, and he knows where to be on the court in terms of space and and where to play and position himself. He understands the game that way, and I think coaches really love those type of players, and that's why he's on the floor. One of the biggest issues he's had and why you know you mentioned talk radio and just the fans and they grumble you know we heard it last night because like he he has those perk plays a lot perk you know? plays he, he missed is a, there groans in the stands oh, he yeah. missed a couple layups last night some guy behind me was like come on singler it's a layup my kid could make that <laughs> and it's like it you know like come on man you probably should make that layup but like you know he had an and one last night you know he kind of has durant's been finding him a lot you know in milwaukee he had a, a, a few important plays and like this isn't a bench where, like, it's hard to get minutes. It's a bench where if, like, you go out and, like, have a couple layups, like, oh, hey, he's been really good. We're going to play him again. And he keeps having these nice performances. Which is shocking because coming into the season, yeah, we, we thought, thought this bench really was going to be the – make this the deepest Thunder team ever, and it hasn't been that. Well, just, everyone just has all these weaknesses that are being exposed. Yeah. No two-way players, <laughs> the code word. Okay, the Thunder's got the uh, Timberwolves over here Friday night at home. And then Saturday Night Live – in San Antonio, uh, and an old friend, Kevin Martin, is signed by the Spurs. I understand you're not, you don't think it's that big a deal, Anthony. Okay, he's declined severely. He's in a, he's on a really deep team. I really don't think he's gonna play much. I don't know. Is he even healthy right now? I mean, was it? 
When's the last time he had a meaningful game? Well, it was, it's had been with the Timberwolves. <laughs> yeah. Well, here in Oklahoma City, he had some. Didn't he kind of have a bad playoff? Uh, yeah. He yeah he did. They could dust the cobwebs off of Andre Miller, who's been playing for him. Don't the Spurs make a, in their business plan, they dust the cobwebs off everybody. And they make them better. We were talking on the, think, think about the slowest lineup in history they could throw out there with like Boris Diaw, Kyle Anderson, uh, Kevin Martin, Andre Miller. Are you putting Kevin David Martin West. in the slow lineup? Kevin Martin ain't fast. He moved without the ball well. Yeah. He may not be fast, ago, but maybe. he moves a lot. Look, they may, that lineup could be pretty good. I'm just saying, like, it, Kevin Martin and Andre Miller fit the Spurs. Okay, we're talking about the only place we're, we're, right. we're talking about the wrong things here. Kawhi Leonard yeah, is on the cover <laughs> of Sports <laughs> Yeah, we really He's are. on the cover of Sports <laughs> Illustrated. And they have their own 30 game winning streak going into tonight's game against the yeah. Bulls, I think. Um, who's better? Warriors or Spurs? Who you got, Eric? I'm going to take the Warriors. Um, I mean, defending champions, got the MVP. They've got more of what we call quote-unquote positional versatility with the, with the two-way players. Andre Iguodala coming off the bench playing well. Draymond Green as a guy who can do everything. Um, and w we've been saying the entire season that we'd like the Thunder better in a matchup against the Spurs in a series than we would against Golden State. Based on one game, right? Based on one game. But as we've, as we've gone through the season and the Thunder have played Golden State a couple different times, they played them close and kind of shot themselves in the foot. I mean, has that gap kind of – has that gap gotten smaller in terms of, hey, we'd rather see the Spurs or the Thunder would rather see the Spurs than the Warriors? I mean, I think that's a question to be asked, too, because the Spurs are not that far away from being in that Warriors. I mean, they're, they're right there with the Warriors. Spurs are Warriors. Uh, look, I don't know if it's a, um, you know, we don't respect the Spurs like we should, but is there anyone up here who really would think the Thunder would have a better chance against the Warriors in the series right now than the Spurs? No. I mean, like, no. It, the Warriors are incredibly good right now. The Spurs' point differential and everything's great, but it's just you, you feel like – Teams like the Thunder and Warriors can physically overwhelm the Spurs with just athleticism potentially, uh, especially the Warriors. We, what did they beat them by in Golden State, like 30? Yeah, it was 30, bad. But it, yeah. yeah, they killed them. Um, look, the Spurs might win the title. They play possum. But, Remember, they play possum. Yeah. They, Duncan didn't play that game, I don't think. Did not. Don't roll your eyes when we say Tim Duncan didn't play a game, Anthony. You can roll your You're eyes. Right. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just Tim think the conversation, like – I don't think it should be Warriors and Spurs right now because I don't think it should be Warriors and anyone right now. Mm. Like they how are, many, how many they games are, of separating the Spurs and the Warriors? Like I think two and a half, half, three, three and a half. Uh, I mean, the Spurs lost to the Pacers the other day. I mean, the Warriors lost 50, to the Lakers, but yeah, um, Spurs are fifty-four and ten. Darnell, what do you say? I still say the Warriors. Um, I think that well, they're definitely younger. Uh, they've got young legs, but more athletic, and I think top to bottom. Uh, I think they're deeper in terms of overall talent, and that, to me, makes them better. That's all. We'll end it right there, Darnell. That's all for this edition of Thunder Thursday, but you can stay with the best coverage team anywhere, every day at News OK and every morning in the Oklahoman. Remember, download the Thunder Buddies podcast. What did you guys go on about today? A lot of stuff. We have mentioned half of it you know, today. We, we, we talked plenty about that. It was Boris Dio and Andre Miller. <laughs> no, we talked about Russ. We talked about Kevin. We had a long conversation about Durant's free agency and all the stuff surrounding that right now. Uh, we all think he's staying. One year. Well, yeah. Oh. Don't give it away. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, maybe you guys could talk about travel blogs sometimes. That's all until next I time. I had a good one from All-Star. <laughs>